so I just got the offset wrong on the tool. Oops! But that's why I uh, had one of these already on the 3D printer bed finished from like, I don't know, three weeks ago when I did this the last time. So I'll swap it out. So this is all that is left of my second tool setter. Yeah, I've gone through two of these now. I'm super disappointed that I did this, but when I crushed the first one, I 3D printed this one because I knew that I am an idiot and I will crush another one. So this right here is the only piece that keeps surviving. The top little platter though, the top little platter, plate or whatever, um, took a beating again this round. It took a beating this round. The, the carbide tip on the mill drill that I'm using as a chamfer chipped off inside of it. Uh, I don't really use that tip because it's chamfer, so no worries there. So I threw it in the lathe, flattened her off again. This is the center post out of the tool setter. So that's where the platter fits on top of. The probing post has three brass or metal contacts embedded into it. It needs to be plastic because of the way the switch works in the probe. I don't know why you keep focusing on the garbage. Just get, get the garbage out of here. So the center post is the switch contacts or part of the switch assembly. What it does is it sits in the oh, <laughs> wrong way. What it does is it goes inside of this guy and in between in between these ball pits is where this contact's going to sit. What it does is it bridges between these two balls and completes the electrical connection so that it can go around to this one. So it can go around to this one and then right here is where I'm going to split the contacts so then it becomes th three, six, six series contacts all in a row so that if you break any one of them by moving the probe, the electrical connection is broken, which is why it works so beautifully and why such small movements cause it, cause it to be tripped. The piece that was in there originally was a printed PCB. It was a little flimsy though, and also I knew if I was gonna keep busting these that I needed to, to come up with a way to repair them. What I came up with is you can get this uh, foil tape at Home Depot and Lowe's and Rona and I don't know, wherever else. And this stuff's great. Uh, I don't have a roll of it right now in front of me, but it just comes on a big roll like duct tape. I use it all over the place, such as sealing up the seams on my ducting for the front of my car to keep everything nice and cool. And this is held up to all kinds of weather. When it came to the probe, I was thinking coolants and things are probably just as harsh as road salts and chemicals. So it'll probably stand the test of time and lots of wiring is aluminum. And it makes it easy because then all you need is a little X-Acto knife to cut it. So then all I do is ripped off a little piece. There we go. Right, so then you get this little foil tape. And you don't press it all the way down. I'll show you why in a second. You just want to get it started. Oop. You just want to get it started and pressed onto the three high points that are around there. Don't press it in between the valleys yet. So then I just took an X-Acto and went around it. And again, it's literally just sticky tin foil or aluminum foil. There we go, the edge is all cleaned up. So then, in between the balls, so this is where the balls are. You can kind of see where, well you remember where they went. So what we want to do is cut the foil in between them and then press it into these valleys on either side and that will set, that's enough of a depression that it pulls that foil edge apart and leaves just enough space to break that electrical contact. So you just cut 
one. So and now that that it's cut, all you do is just push it into the corner. And you can see you can see right there that it's split it. So go all the way around and do that. Push it into the corner. Like so the key is that cut that's in between each of those contacts. So now when I put a ball in each one, what it does is it connects, put a ball here and a ball here, and then when the post is in there like that, it's gonna connect between the balls, which completes the electrical connection. Like this one that I already have made because I wasn't planning on shooting a video. But then last night when I was repairing it, I lost that one ball there. And then today, someone was asking me if I was dead on the channel. I was like, I better make a video. So they were brass balls in there, but the coolant is like corroding them or maybe they were corroded from sitting there forever. So these stainless steel balls are a bit better corrosion wise, so. But I actually think I'm gonna swap all the brass balls out. You need these one eighth balls. These, the one eighth little brass thing you can find, like these you can find at the hobby shop and saw them down pretty easily to size. These one eighth balls though were really hard to find. Turns out mountain bike stores. I don't know, do the derailleur systems have little balls in them? I'm not sure, but cheap. I kind of want to use this one because it's nicer looking. <laughs> oh, you can't because it's, you were just showing. So now what you do is you put the little balls into the depressions for the balls. Like that. See? So the foil makes the connection between the balls. And the post goes in the center like that. The center post makes the connection. So right now we've got series connections going all the way around and I want to put a wire in on one side and a wire in on the other. So I need to break the last piece of foil right in between these two screw holes. Just like that. So right here you can see I've broken the connection now. Because we're done with the knife. So the next piece is the housing. The body has six screw holes. It has three to secure it to the bottom of this, and then three to secure it, secure this to this. Now there's two little holes in it, two extra little holes for the wires to go through. So here's our little wires. All right, so this is, this is what gets plugged into the Haas. Um, one of these is just the shield wire. Literally just a series switch with six contacts in it. And it is not gonna focus on the tip of that wire. <laughs> there you go, just like that. Those two little wires going through the holes. You wanna line them up with the same side that's got the split in it. So what I like to do is just bend the electrical or the bare metal part of the wire out of the way. Press this down. I like to get one started, deeply started, before I get the other ones in, otherwise the balls will just come flying out. Okay, so now that they're started, so the balls won't fall out. So you can see here where the wires are sticking out. This is where the split was, so that the connection goes all the way around from this wire, around to this one through all six contacts. Now the wires need to be pressed between this piece and this piece 
so that they get a good contact to that aluminum foil. Sounds tricky, but is ridiculously easy because of the way we did it. And then with it kind of sandwiched together, torque up the screws. Not too tight, it is 3D printed after all. There you go, that's the body rebuilt. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see in between there. So the balls are all captured in there by the sandwiching action of these two. And same thing with the electrical contact. Because those bare wires are sandwiched on both sides of that electrical break. It makes it one big, one big. It makes it a bunch of series contacts inside, which is why the probe works the way it does. Smart, smart little system. I love this little probe. Especially now that I have a 3D printed one. Okay, so now this piece needs to go in and it needs to be pushed into those contacts. So in the back side of it, there's a small recessed hole or a spring. Now these just come out of pens. Just like, you got a pen, steal the spring. Right, so then you push it into that without losing it. The boss is not that deep either. So there you go. Got our little spring dangler in there now. So the inside, it just goes down. It's a little tricky to get around that wire though. There, boom. As you sneak it past those little wires, it sits in there just nice. Oh, look at that. Already back to probing. Probing nothing yet in my mind because I know we're almost done and I'm excited because my probe's been out of commission for a few hours now. Okay, and then all it is to finish it off is just bolt in the base back on. Um, you probably could make one of these. These are not that complicated. You just need those set screws and then the post that's still on the, on the machine. So my other probe that's the actual probe, probe, not the tool setter probe, I packed with um, dielectric grease inside to keep everything clean. On this one though, um, instead of printing a body that goes the complete way, uh, I printed it with, like I, I split it so that this little thing goes on top to keep stuff out of it best it's, as best it can, but also I could just lift it up and blast it out with air inside if it's a real problem. So now we just gotta bolt the base on. The base has got a little, a little nipple on it to just kind of catch the spring. And you just press it in there and then the spring makes it a little tricky. God, 3D printed threads, be careful. I mean, it's just a tool setter. It does not need to be torqued crazily. It's got more than enough rigidity for the tiny little spring that's in. Well, you saw the spring that was in there. There's no need for crazy amounts of pressure keeping everything together. Oh yeah, that's plenty tight. There you go. Tool setter. Back and commit. Oh, no. Got I guess that finishes it off. I guess I'll uh, go do another, another, another one. Crap! I knew that was a bad print. Oh yeah, no fusion there at all. I think it's my fan settings are a little too aggressive. So it's causing cold joints, but. Uh, it's probably a good thing because I kind of glazed over prep of this thing. So after I printed it, I print these holes a little bit smaller than what I need so that I can open them up with this drill, which opens them up just enough for me to get those brass rods in, but those rods and the way the plastic is cut, the, even though this is cutting almost to the right size, plastic kind of pushes out as you cut it and then comes back in 
afterwards. The proper way to cut it would probably be to ream it instead of drilling. See, I just ran a little drill in there all the way. Also definitely try and get them in straight. It's a good idea to tap the end of the hole because if you just force this into that, there's not much holding it together. And I've, I've snapped three of them now today. <laughs> two of them, two of them. This is the third that I'm not gonna snap, right? Lucas. All right, so I'll take it apart. <laughs> this part is not fun. Because you need that interference fit to keep them straight on the balls, which keeps everything straight, which keeps everything straight, which keeps everything straight, keeps everything straight right? So, mm, mm, it's a little tight to the one side. I don't know if you can see that, but it's still breaking contact, which is good. So I think it's fine. We'll run with it. Let's just see what she does. Okay, this time hopefully you don't tear it apart. You monster torque it on there. There you go. Back in business. That's it, that's the probe. So I guess now uh, we should verify that it works. What we're looking for is this skip signal here to change. Oh! When you t well, okay, so as soon as you plug it in, it should go to zero, I guess, would tell you that it's working. Right? Oh yeah! There you go. There you go. Eh? Confirmed working. Hey, 3D printed for the win. All right, well, I'm gonna get this thing back to the machine, get it all, I don't know, do you call that tramming it in when you make the top surface of this? parallel with the, uh, the table travel. Well, I'm gonna lean down because the battery's dying and we might only get one shot of this. So yeah, so it's all trammed in or whatever you call that. So it's all perfectly whatevered. I'm going to take the other probe, probe it in so the G59 is exactly where it needs to be and then I'll probe in the height because that also needs to be put back in and then that's all set and then good to move forward. And I'll continue talking about this because that's what I was talking about when I busted my tool setters. So I'm not even sure which order these videos are going to be in, but they're both coming up. So you better like, comment and subscribe, subscribe. Yeah, anyways, that's it. Have a good day. See you later.